going guys? How's it going? Um, today, what I thought I'd do um, is, as soon as I put this one together, which is a Kramer Pacer Classic with a Sustainiac in it. This is my uh, Sustainiac demo guitar, which I've just done a, a video on about how all the controls work and all that sort of stuff. Um, what I thought I'd do is I'd get hold of another one of these and I'd put the Fernandez unit into it. So that's the Fernandez FSK 101, which is their humbucker version. Um, see what happens as far as the install and then we can let these two fight it out to the death to see what they sound like, features, actual sound quality, stuff like that. Um, so, here we go. So, this is the Fernandez humbucker driver. Um, quite a serious, solid unit. Um, your actual driver is this coil here. Um, this one, like all of the other versions, um, and with the Sustainiac as well, that's just a dummy. But as you can see, it's a completely sealed unit. Um, fits basically the same as any humbucking pickup, much like everything else. Um, the only major difference that you've got to consider is this cable. Um, the cable itself is fine. The only issue you get is with this little connector at the end. Um, it is quite a lot bigger than the wire and if you're having to run this through a guitar body, um, depending on what guitar it is, sometimes the hole is not only just big enough to get this wire through so you're going to have to do some creative drilling to be able to get that in. Um, you're going to have to measure that across its diagonal uh, which could end up being quite a severe hole through both the gap between the neck and bridge and then on into the cavity so um, things like that need to be considered and what we have here is the sustainer driver uh, same humbucker design as the uh, as the Fernandez, it will fit straight into a standard humbucker route without any problem. Um, main differences, obviously the, it still has the dummy coil here, uh, but it's an open it's an open humbucker so you can see all the way up inside that that there is nothing at all inside that uh, dummy coil. Um, this mold comes with a metal base plate as opposed to the injection molded version on the Fernandez um, and you can see the two um, poles for the sustainer on, on this one. You can also see the the driver coil in there behind the, case, behind the wire. There it is. Um, from an install point of view the main difference is this wire. Um, it doesn't have the connector on the end uh, which means that you can get this into basically any guitar that you've taken a, a neck pickup out of you can get that cable in without a problem um, other difference that you can get is this also comes in white um, and in a, in a black version it also comes in a seven string version um, which Fernandez doesn't do here is the control board for the Fernandez Sustainer. Um, it is a fairly chunky unit. Um, it's about three inch by two inch in area. Um, you've got your two switches here, so you've got your on off there and your mode switch there. Um, they're both two way switches. Um, as you can see, they are hardwired onto the circuit board. So it's not just a case when installing this that you need to find space for the switches you need to find space for this whole board uh, into the guitar uh, which is quite a bit of real estate that you need to find and route out and um, it does really limit where you can fit this 
um, you often see this unit mounted quite far away from all the rest of the controls um, because you do have to get obviously the cavity down so that these switches can go through which means all the rest of this is pretty much sat in the cavity like that which does take up quite a bit of space on the back which would be the bit that you'd be able to see when it's installed um, you've got the various trim pots for for adjustment and you've got a battery indicator LED um, I've taken all the wires off at the moment just so uh, you know finger juggling is a little bit easier with this thing um, so yeah that is um, that's the control board so this is the board that you get with your sustaining unit um, fairly small um, it's probably again about sort of three inches wide but it's a lot narrower than the uh, Fernandez board you've got two main clip areas so you've got an 8 pin up here and a 10 pin at this end um, your three main trim pots are on here as well um, and then it's all sealed in this nice little plastic shrink wrap type stuff um, generally when this is installed you install it so that the 8 pin is nearest to your selector switch um, which can make installs a little tricky to get the orientation right uh, but the board can be in that way flat down um, other than that way round you can basically get this in in some way into most cavities in a guitar anyway without having to uh, get clever with a router um, this is the humbucker version which is obviously the install versions that we're looking at today. Um, Sustainiac also do a single coil bridge specific version which um, looks like that. It's exactly the same size board if I put them around the same size. Exactly the same size board. Um, it's just the shrink wrap is white to identify it and it has um, a slight tweak to it to deal with the, the difference in the bridge pickup um, but that's it that's the difference um, this would be done at, as part of the order so you specify what the guitar is and then the kits built around whatever that guitar is so um, generally for today we're going to be looking at this board okay well here is the beast in question um, it's a Kramer Pacer Classic. I do like these things. Um, as some of you have probably already seen, I've got this in white as well, which has the Sustainiac fitted in it. Um, so it seemed like a good idea that I get another one in this lovely, subtle, bright yellow um, to put the Fernandez kit into. Um, can't see why not. Should be quite straightforward, hopefully. First problem, um, what I'm trying to always do with this is make this kind of look nice. When you're putting these things in, just randomly putting switches in is a bit stupid. Um, so you want to kind of make it look alright. Now, we've got a parallel line here with the pots. Now, in the ideal world, I've got the selector switch there, and I'd look to put the two Fernandez switches somewhere here which would sort of give you two nice, you know, switches, switches, pots, pots, and it all comes down there, and it would look nice. Um, there's a bit of a problem. If you look in that cavity, there is loads of space, right? We've got loads of space down here, which would be ideal for putting switches into. Um, we've even got space up here, you know, you could put a battery in and all that, but no. No, we can't do that at all. Here's the board. We'd want to have that's your on off, that's your mode. So going by the way sustaining going by the way that Fernandez install it, you'd have the on off the furthest away, which is fine. So it would be something like that. 
Right, can't get down anyway, and there's absolutely no chance of getting those in with those pots in the way, because this board would have to be flat down against that. So, plan one, can't do it. Plan two would be put the parallel, I'll try and get this in shot, this side. It's not great, but it would do. So it would be something like, mount the switches somewhere like that, so that they follow this parallel line. Now, can't do that either. Why not? Look at the size of the board, right? Three inch on a diagonal, if I try and get this, let me have a look. Right, it's that way around. Let's get everything the way it's gonna be, right. If I put that at the angle so that they follow the parallel, right, which would be uh, that way, right, now we're talking. If I put it that way, there isn't actually room for the route. There certainly isn't room to put a cover plate on it because you hit this edge of the spring cavity and you hit this round over here. So the circuit board will actually have to be mounted square on. Now that's probably better because it's actually going to look nicer. Once the cover's on, the cover will be at least lining up with these and lining up with the lines from here, um, as opposed to being all bent out of shape around here. So it'll have to go that way, which means, the death lick of that, that we're going to have the switches sitting down somewhere here. Um, okay not the way i'd like it but we are limited by the board so the board will sit somewhere about there um, i've taken some bits off to get started and we're looking at putting this little fella into the front now as i mentioned before the connector i'll show you what i mean um, one wire hole, one connector, yeah that's not going through. Um, so uh, I don't even think it'll go through this one, which these holes are generally bigger. Uh, no, okay. So um, I better get the drills out and we're in. Um, took a big handful of brave pills and drilled what you can see down here is now a 12 millimeter hole so that runs through there through there and then down into the cavity I uh, actually had to take the volume pot out because the uh, drill line was going to hit uh, the back end of this pot so you know took it out of the way to save myself any more headaches um, but yeah okay first bit is in. So positioning the circuit board. I've made this little um, kind of template thing so that I know where the orientation of everything is um, and that after shifting it um, seems to be the best place for it. Um, it's a mixture between kind of you know somewhere in the middle between getting what will be the cover plate lined up with everything else and putting these switches in a half decent position. Um, I just need to sort of double check it and then triple check it again um, because what you won't want is your mode switch to be jammed right up behind the trem which would be ridiculous so um, if all goes well I'm uh, gonna uh, start making some mess well that's a big cavity Oh, giggity, 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 giggity. after lots and lots of routing uh, we are done uh, the unit is in it's all fitted into its little box there um, I've run contact paint around that just to uh, shield it a little bit which is good. Um, the insides of here haven't had too much, all I've actually done 
is swap the master tone part over so that the bridge has coil split. Um, but basically it sort of worked out not too bad. I'm doing an experiment with the lid where I've mounted the battery box to it. Um, I've got another one. This is just a bit of a test really. So that will go in something like that. Uh, I've made this which is a smoked clear plastic which will go in there so you can see the little LED. Um, let me rapidly try and do this. Magic screwdriver. Can I do this through the camera? No, that's really complicated. Let's actually look at the screw I'm trying to fit. There we go. Right. Quick flip over. And you can see what we've got. We have the two screws in there. Switches. They're not screws. They're switches. We've got the two switches in there. And we've got Seymour Duncan TB4 in there. Because why not? And uh, there's the Fernandez. So that one's done. All I need to do now is uh, set it up the same way as the Sustainiac guitar. The beasts are ready. We are all done. They are both set up exactly the same way. Um, both having Diodario NYXL tens on it. Um, both set up the same, string height is the same, pickup height is the same, everything is the same, so let's battle commence. Yeah.